All right, hello again, now for two people. Uh, so the next part of what we're doing with polynomial functions, so we, in the last section, we, we spent most of the time just doing um, like the operations and the attributes of any higher order polynomial function. Uh, now we're going to, the second half of this unit, we're going to kind of focus in on cubic functions. Um, so the first part of this, today we're going to talk about what the cubic function is and the, and the transformations super fast because it's something we've done uh, before with different functions back at the beginning of the year. Uh, and then for the remainder of the time until spring break, we're going to talk about um, some factoring, some factoring techniques of cubic functions. Uh, remember I said this whole time with quadratics, the factoring is not going away. It's not going away. So we're going to see some more of that. So here is uh, our old friend, the parent function for x to the third power, or the cubic function. And then today we're going to look at the different transformations and kind of what goes on with here. Uh, so the one thing to remember is that our domain for the cubic function and range, both, are from negative infinity to infinity. So make sure to keep that in mind all the time as well. So as we go through here, so here again, here's just a kind of a miniaturized version of the parent function. But when we talk about uh, transformations, here is the format for the transformation. Same thing you've had for, the, for all the other functions, our A, B, H, K values, and kind of go from there. But it's been a while since we've talked about those. So what I'm going to do before I, before I fill all of these out, as far as what the A, B, and uh, A, B, H, K, what they do, Let's see what it does graphically using Desmos, uh, and then and then put that into kind of a verbal description. Okay, so let me um, get this up here. So you see, here is our parent function. Oops, no, it's not. There's a parent function, um, and you see. So let's start with a. So if you remember, if a is greater than one, what does that do to our graph? Now, here's your visual clue. If I make A bigger, how would you describe what's happening there? And if I make A smaller than 1, how would you describe what's happening there? So what we call that, that's either a vertical stretch if A is bigger than 1, or a vertical compression if A is less than 1. Now, we also have a B value, which honestly, B values in algebra 2 are kind of dumb, but i got to talk, anyway. talk about them anyway. But let's look at what the B value does. Notice it's kind of backwards from A. So if I make B bigger, it's getting horizontally compressed. So it's kind of squishing horizontally. And if I make B less than 1, then it's getting horizontally stretched. So it's getting kind of stretched out in a horizontal way. Listen, um, I had someone in class uh, before I recorded the video who said, you know, isn't, doesn't the B value do the same thing as an A? And the answer is yes. Um, if, you, if you have a B of greater than 1, so it's a horizontal compression, you can write that as a vertical stretch or vice versa. Okay, so B values are kind of dumb, but they are what they are. And then how about H and K? Well, remember, H goes left and right, just shifts the whole thing, shifts that origin value left and right. And then K just shifts everything up or down. OK, so let's go ahead and get those written down. And then we'll go and look at a couple problems on, on, on how to write functions given the different descriptions. So if a is less than 1, so like 1 half or 0.2 or whatever, then it's a vertical compression or vertically compressed. And if a is greater than 1, then it's be vertically stretched. And then the b value, again, the b value is kind of dumb, but, you know, it is what it is. Uh, it's basically backwards from a. Okay, so if B is less than 1, again, 1 half, 0.7, whatever, then it's being horizontally, uh, it's being horizontally stretched. And if B is greater than 1, it's being horizontally compressed. 
It's important that you notice here. Uh, and again, just remember, if it's stretched for B, it's less than one. If it's compressed for B, it's greater than one. So really, we're talking about all the time, we're talking about the reciprocal of those values for the B value. Okay. And then for K and H, again, that's just going up and down. So if you see plus anything on the outside, that's a translation up. Minus something on the outside, that's a translation down. And then if you see uh, the H value, remember the H value is the only one that's kind of weird. It's, it's basically backwards. So if you see X minus H, that means H is positive. So that means it's going to the right. And if you see H, uh, sorry, X plus H inside the parentheses, that means H is negative. So that means you go to the left. Okay. So I'm going to ask you guys to do two different things. So the thing one is take a verbal description of a function and then just write down what the function is. And I'm going to rewrite kind of the template here for you. So A times B, another parentheses. So that's going to be your template. Whenever you read a problem, just say, okay, well, do I have an A, do I have a B, do I have an H, do I have a K, and then just plug in the numbers as you need to. So in this case here, notice that I'm going one unit right and four down. So one right, that's H is equal to positive one, four down, K is equal to negative four. There's no A, there's no B, or there's no change in A and B, I should say, right? So my y will be equal to, remember, a and b, kind of the base value of a and b is 1. So if it's not being changed, then a and b just stay at 1. Okay? The base value of h and k is 0. So that's, again, if they're not shifting at all, then we can just leave it as 0. So a is still 1, so I don't, need, I don't need to write that. b is 1, I don't need to write that. My h is positive 1, so it's going to be x minus 1 cubed minus 4. And I just realized I, I forgot one box up here. I've got the reflections box. And to be honest with you, I'm going to take out that negative inside the parentheses because, again, it just doesn't matter for, for cubic functions. If you see a negative sign in front of the x, you know, in front of the parentheses, that just saying it's going upside down, so it's reflecting over the x-axis. Okay. So now that we know that, so now we look at number two, the parent cubic function is reflected over the x-axis, what we talked about, shifted five left, and 2 down, so that means h is negative 5 going left, and k is negative 2. And is being reflected, so my function would be negative 1, or just negative, x plus 5 cubed minus 2. And that's it. So I've got two more up here. Uh, I'm going to ask you to pause the video and do number three and four on your own real fast. And if you need to go back a little bit just to see, there, there's a template again, but if you need to go back and review what the A, B, and H, K values are, you can certainly do that. So I'm going to have you pause the video, and I'll keep on going here in about 15 seconds. Okay, so on number three, there's no H, there's no K. All we're doing is a vertical stretch by four, and then a reflect over the x-axis. So that means that it'd be negative four x to the third power, and that's it. There's no B, there's no H, there's no K, and that negative sign, as soon as you see a negative sign, just put the negative in front, and that's gonna take care of that for you. And then on number four, uh, it's horizontally compressed by a factor of two-fifths and then shifted three up. So 
the three up is the easy one. That's K is positive three. But this guy here, remember on that, on that first page, if you need to rewind and kind of go back in the video a little bit, remember the horizontal compression, it's backwards. So we talk about the reciprocal. So B in this case is actually five over two, because we know for a compression, it's gotta be bigger than one. So my function here would be written as y equals parentheses, five over two x cubed plus three. Again, there's no h value, so I don't need that second parentheses. There's no a, so I don't need anything out from, no reflection, stuff like that. Okay, now when you go in the other direction, if you're given a graph and want to write the function, now, again, we have to look at our parent function. Let's go back real quick. Notice my parent function direction, it's going up from left to right, right? So that's kind of the base one. If you see it go in the opposite direction, down from left to right, that's going to tell you it's got a reflection. Also notice the pattern. So here's my origin. You always want to look for that middle point because that's going to tell you your H and K, your left, right, or up, down. But you look at a, the, another point given two also, because if you have that pattern of going over one and up one, then there's no stretch going on. If that changes, though, you might see a change in, what the, in that A value. Okay? So in this case here, on number seven, notice my, my new middle point, my new origin, is just going up two. So it's shifting up two. So that's my K. And there's no H, there's no left and right going on. Notice it's upside down, so it got reflected. And that same pattern applies. So I go over one and up one, over one, down one, to that point right there. So there's no other stretch. So that's all that's happening. It's going up to, and it got reflected. That's it. Okay, so I would write that as y equals negative x cubed plus 2. And that would give me that function. How about number 8? Again, if you want to pause the video real fast, how would I write the function for number 8? So we look at our middle point, our new origin, basically, and we see it's gone right to, so that's our H, and it's gone up one. That's our K. And it's going, the, it's going the same direction. It's going up from left to right, so there's no reflection going on. And it's got that same pattern, over one, up one. So there's nothing else. That's all it does. Just go right one, so that is x minus two cube up one plus one. And then the last example, and then I'm going to we'll, we'll wrap things up for this video. Take a look at that one, see if you see what's going on on that. So we see our middle point. Again, all it's doing is going up one. So that's our K value. Not going left and right, no H. It's upside down, so it's not reflected. But here, notice, instead of going over one and up one, this is going over one and up three. So that is your vertical stretch. Okay, you're not going to see a horizontal stretch because, again, they can have it written as a vertical stretch. So it's a vertical stretch of three because it got kind of stretched out by three units from that same kind of pattern. So that's your A value. And that's all. So I'm going to write that as Y equals negative three. Again, the reflection just makes that first thing negative. X to the third power plus one. Okay, so those are transformations of cubic functions from a verbal description or from a graph. If you have questions, as always, come in for tutoring, send a message. And until next time, stay safe.